Cancer. It's one of the most feared diseases currently in existence. It is as mysterious as it is deadly, and though many years and billions of dollars have been spent on the so-called war on cancer, many aspects of the genesis and progression of the disease remain enigmas. One frustrating aspect is that it seems that different strains of cancer have so little in common. Even within individual tumors, the component cells have different sets of mutations. However, there is one trait shared by the majority of cancers that has been known about since the 1920s. The fact that most cancer cells have unusually high rates of glycolysis and subsequently lactic acid fermentation, even under aerobic conditions, a seemingly inefficient way of producing energy that is nevertheless a dominant phenotype. This trait was discovered by Otto Warburg, a German biochemist who was so well respected that in 1921 he procured 10,000 marks from the Weimar Republic with a one-sentence research proposal. His work on cancer metabolism won him a Nobel Prize in 1931. His observation of high aerobic glycolysis in cancer eventually became known as the Warburg effect, and although it was well accepted by the scientific community, its mechanism remained a mystery. Skipping ahead to 1969, a researcher named Peter Peterson had just completed some postdoctoral work under Albert Leninger, author of a certain textbook, and was joining the faculty at Johns Hopkins University. Peterson was greatly interested in the Warburg effect, and understanding it has since become his life's work. In his many years of research, he has made many important discoveries towards explaining how and why the Warburg effect happens. One discovery was that cancer cells still have functioning mitochondria, though in reduced quantity and capacity. Most crucially, he determined that the enzyme hexokinase 2, which phosphorylates glucose and tags it for glycolysis, is pivotal in the initiation of the Warburg effect. Hexokinase 2 is bound to the mitochondria and is greatly overexpressed in cancer cells exhibiting the Warburg effect, causing the elevated level of glycolysis to occur. Additionally, the M2 isoform of pyruvate kinase, PKM2, has been shown to play a role in the metabolism of cancer cells with the Warburg effect. PKM2 is at the end of the glycolytic pathway, dephosphorylating PEP to make pyruvate. PKM2 has less enzymic activity than PKM1, which is more commonly found in normal cells. It acts as a bottleneck that causes glycolytic intermediates to go towards anabolic pathways and biosynthesis. There are other enzymes in the glycolysis pathway which alter activity in cancer cells, but what is important is knowing that there is a major metabolic shift in cancer cells that occurs at multiple steps in glycolysis. So why are these metabolic changes advantageous to cancer? The primary reason is that the switch allows some of the pyruvate generated to go towards biosynthesis, which is accelerated in rapidly multiplying cancer cells. Additionally, the metabolism of cancer cells protects them from hypoxic conditions, since they do not require aerobic conditions. The prevalence of the Warburg effect in cancer, and the fact that the same metabolic changes seem to account for it, suggests that cancer may be best thought of as a metabolic disease rather than a genetic one, which is primarily ca the case today. An experiment by Thomas Seyfried gives a convincing case for this new paradigm. A tumor cell's nucleus was transplanted into the cytoplasm of a normal cell, and the cell did not beget a tumor cell. Additionally, a normal cell's nucleus was transplanted into a tumor cell, which divided into tumor cells. The state of the offspring was dependent on the contents of the cytoplasm, not the nucleus. This points to metabolic dysfunction as playing a major role in cancer's progression. This different way of thinking about cancer has proven useful in its diagnosis and treatment. FDG-PET is an imaging technique that relies on the presence of elevated levels of glycolysis. The compound FDG enters the cell and is phosphorylated like glucose by hexokinase. With the charged phosphate group, it cannot diffuse out of the cell and its fluorescence allows for imaging with FDG-PET. As for treatment, recent research suggests that glycolytic inhibitors could be effective, with some also arguing for a ketogenic diet, low carbohydrate, high fat, to literally starve cancer cells. Peterson mentions the use of 3-bromopyruvate, a hexokinase 2 inhibitor, as an option, which was discovered to stop glycolysis and impair mitochondria function in cancer cells but not in normal cells. This last discovery led to an experiment in which 19 out of 19 mice with massive tumors became cancer-free. In the area of prevention, Reitman et al. hypothesized, based on a biophysical model, that high blood glucose levels may be causing the disruption of metabolism that leads to the Warburg effect and some cancers. Ultimately, the Warburg effect is a fascinating area of cancer research. Its mechanism and role in cancer genesis and proliferation is gradually being understood, and this understanding holds great promise for finding a cure for many types of cancer.